After a two-year wait, majors are back, and CSGO has come in force. These stickers look absolutely incredible, and there's already a ton of really good-looking crafts with them. A lot of people are saying these are the new Caddo 14s, which I personally don't agree with, but I do think these stickers do look really good. So let's talk about investing into this major and the prospects of each part of it. Before we get into that, though, let's go ahead and take a look at our sponsor, ShadowPay. ShadowPay is a CSGO marketplace you can go to to buy and sell your CSGO skins for real money. With the help of an extension, there are player-to-player -player trades, but if you don't want to wait for someone, they also have the option to insta-sell. The site is clean, minimalist, and easy to navigate, and there are a huge amount of skins on the site at high discounts, much cheaper than the Steam Community Market, that you can go ahead and pick up on ShadowPay. Plus, if you use my referral code NALO, you actually get a 2% deposit bonus. So if you want to go ahead and check out ShadowPay, you can use the link in the description below to get that 2% deposit bonus, and get some nice CSGO skins. So the structure of this video is going to be a little bit different than my other investing guides because I actually have an interview with some people that are super interested in esports and have done a huge data breakdown on all of the teams and players that I wanted to go ahead and add to this video because they have a great perspective on some of the high performing teams and high performance players that are probably going to show up this major. And as we know, standout players and standout teams are going to affect their prices in a positive direction, so having this data is extremely valuable and having this opinion is also extremely valuable. The the interview will be at the end of this video, and the two people in the interview are actually in my Discord server, so if, so if you want to go ahead and talk to them in the Discord server, or just use the variety of other options my Discord server provides, you can go ahead and use the link in the description below to get to that. So for starters, one of the big things here is that these capsules are actually following the RMR sticker model. Basically, the capsules start at 99 cents, and if there's a sticker sale, they will go down to 25 cents. There's pretty much a sale every single major, but they did change up the capsules, so there's no guarantee there will be a sale this major as well. However, I would expect a sale. For that reason, I would hold off on investing until the end of the major, because you're going to be able to get capsules at 75% off, and you're probably going to be able to get stickers at around 75% off as well. Like RMR, there's probably going to be a huge amount of people interested in investing into this major, and that's only added on with the fact that we had a recent operation, and of course, this major after two years, which is going to bring in a lot of returning players and new people alike. Unfortunately, that means these capsules are probably going to follow the RMR trend. Even though the stickers look really nice, and they actually look better than like 90% of the stickers CSGO has ever released, since they are so cheap, the volume on these things is going to be absolutely insane, and likely there's just going to be a lot of price out going on and not enough new people buying in and counterbalancing all of that pricing out. It's only day one and Furia and Navi hollows, which are probably the most desired hollows out of this entire major, are only sitting at around $5. That's not exactly a great sign. Now backtracking just a little bit back to RMR, we actually got gold team stickers in these capsules as well, which means RMR is just really screwed. That's the only way to put it. The RMR investing prospect looked pretty nice, but unfortunately with a myriad of updates and a myriad of pricing out and so many people interested in investing into it, the entire thing just didn't really play out as well as it could have. Unfortunately, owning RMR right now is kind of a death sentence for your profits, but of course with anything in CSGO, in the long term, there is still going to probably be profit potential. So if you're really deep into the RMR thing and you don't really care to sell until you get a profit, you're probably going to be waiting for quite a while now. Okay, now back to the major, and of course stickers are not the only thing to talk about here. We also have the passes and the souvenir tokens, and team patches. Now team patches were something we talked about a little while back, and a lot of people were talking about how team patches could really make the patch meta a thing, making people interested in getting patches because they'll be able to show support for their favorite team in-game. However, right now the prospect of team patches kind of looks a little bleak, but I can say these are extremely low quantity. There's not a lot of people going into these, so maybe if some of you out there like the more niche investments, this could be something to look at. So for autograph capsules, CSGO has decided to do something pretty unpopular here, and they've decided to only make autographs for the top players in the tournament. There are a very small amount of people that like this, but generally I'm seeing a really negative reaction to this, so I guess it's possible that CSGO might revert this, but I do think it's a little bit too far along in the development process, where at this point they're just going to keep what they currently have and just give the autographs to the top players. Now this is really interesting because it means that in general, autographs are a lot more limited. The majority of players in the tournament are not even going to have an autograph in-game. They're reserved for only the top teams, and therefore the top players. This is kind of an interesting change because it means that autographs are now more of a status symbol of sorts, but since this is a really new thing, it's very speculative and I don't really want to go into too much detail on it. However, I do think this does bode well for autographs in general, and I think this autograph change is going to be good in terms of the profit aspect. The other nice thing is this is happening at the end of the tournament, so a lot of the general tournament hype is going to be died down by then, and that could mean less over-investing. Now as for the safest investment option here, the one that's pretty much going to guarantee you profit every time, you're going to be looking at the passes. 
These are very slow moving and these are very slow profit gainers, but over time they do eventually turn a profit, as pretty much every pass before it has. So if you want to avoid speculation and these new processes, invest into the passes. Now souvenirs are going to work a little bit differently this time around. Obviously they removed autograph signatures until the end of the tournament and a lot of players aren't going to have them anyway, so clearly souvenirs aren't going to work. To fix this, instead of doing autographs on souvenirs, instead they are now going to do a gold map sticker on the souvenirs. Personally I think this is kind of interesting, I don't think it's that bad of an idea. I would definitely prefer player signatures, but this will be the first time we have map based stickers, so I think that's kind of cool. So of course we still have one question to answer here, are we going to have the 2021 versions of the Dust Mirage and Vertigo collections in the souvenir packages, or are they going to use the old ones because of the overlap with Operation Riptide? Now right now we still don't know for sure, but it's likely that they're going to use the 2021 collections. That means we're probably going to be seeing the fully golden gold aberesque and some nice gold stickers on an op hydra. If they do use the 2021 collections, those are going to be a really hype souvenir package because it will be the first time we see these new collections in souvenir form. Those are definitely packages to watch. But don't forget we're also going to get ancient souvenirs because the ancient map is now in the active duty map pool, so the ancient collection is now going to be transferred into a souvenir package. So we're going to be getting Welcome to the Jungles and AK Pantera Ancas with some gold stickers. I think the Pantera Anka is going to look absolutely amazing, and that's definitely going to be a souvenir package to watch as well. Obviously they're not out yet, so we don't have the specific details, but the prospects look nice for those packages. Now on to the major stickers and capsules. So clearly these stickers look really, really nice, and that's going to cause a lot of people to buy into them. They're also really cheap, which is another reason a lot of people are going to buy into them, much like RMR. As a result, these are probably going to be extremely slow moving and aren't going to be super profitable. With the way that RMR went, I honestly think that the passes are actually going to outpace these things in profit potential. However, if you are kind of a sticker purist and you only want to invest in the stickers, here are some options that I think are going to be the best. For Hollows, we have Furia, Maus, Copenhagen Flames, and Team Liquid. These are the stickers that I think best utilize each of their color schemes, and Copenhagen Flames is a specific standout one because it actually utilizes an orange to blue fade, kind of like how Hotter Flames are blue, which I think is pretty cool. The Copenhagen Flames have a really nice sticker, Valve really boosted them out with this one, so I definitely think they're going to be one to watch. Navi and NIP both share the yellow to blue kind of fade, but as Navi is the far more popular team, I think Navi is going to be the better one to go for in the future. And as we can see, Navi is an incredibly popular one already, so I think that's going to be a big one to watch as well. So if you're interested in that part of the major, all you have to do is buy those stickers. Obviously you can go with just popular stickers, that's usually a strategy a lot of people do choose to go with. So you can go with Navi and Astralis for example, that's usually a pretty popular pick. But in general, those are the main stickers that I would look out for. And now I've pretty much covered everything this major has added onto the game, so I'm going to go ahead and move into a interview that I actually recorded with two extremely intelligent people from my Discord server that have been doing a large amount of analytics on this major and the players. And I asked them a few questions about which players to watch, which teams to watch, who's going to be the dark horse of the major, and different things that they like about the stickers. So shout out to Zonix Heapings and Foxdale for doing all of this work and giving me this interview. If you guys are interested in the unedited interview, you can go ahead and just request it below, and if there's enough demand for it, I'll upload it. And keep in mind, at the end of the day, this is just their opinion on stuff, so obviously don't go after them if you don't agree with them. This is just how they view things. I have taken a look at quite a few players. Now, the obvious ones are Simple, Zaiwu, Shiro, all those guys. The three that I am looking for personally are number one, Zipix. The reason why is because since Device has left, he has slacked on his game. The Clutch Minister is looking a little, I'm not going to say stiff, but a little lower than what he has been. Zipix has four majors. He's going to try 100% to win this one, even without his best friend. That's the thing that I want to see. I want to see the intensity in this clutch minister to win this major. Number two, this was a hard one for me. I chose Shiro because of how amazing that gamut has been playing. The third person that I wanted to look at is Yukinder. Statistics-wise, he's the best player to watch. His headshot percentage is 63%. He has a 0.74 KDR. Uh, he has a 1.78 uh, rating. He's amazing statistically. And he has the best ADR in the top 10 or top 5, if I'm not mistaken. So there's been a lot of uh, speculation about Zaiwu, about Simple. Any guys being off means that there's going to be a lot of other players that are going to be able to see step up to KDS levels. The three that I see, though, Olaf Meister is the oldest guard in the game. FaZe just got him back. What is going to happen with the old guards with his old skill group? I think he is 
arguably the most anticipated return going back to the major. The second one is Device. Going to Ninjas is a huge step for him. And that whole Ninja squad is, well, they look to be really meshing. Device is one that you should watch, watch out for because could this be his fifth major win with a brand new team? And the third one is one that Zonix actually introduced me to. We need to be looking very, very carefully into Srysen, or Searson as some people say. Big Clan made it in by the skin of their teeth. And with Tabson, Tizian, Srysen, that whole roster is stacked. But Srysen might just be the most underrated opera in the game today. His shots are insane, simple-esque at some points. When when we think of three teams, G2, FaZe Clan, uh, Na'Vi, those are, those are teams that everybody uh, just flocked to. I'm going to take my first one on Gambit. Gambit was the number one team in the world for a couple of weeks, and they looked unbeatable. They beat Na'Vi handily. Shiro and Hobbit, unbelievable talents. And that team... Might be a sleeper to a couple of people. Everyone's just like, Navi's going to take it all. Gambit Gaming is real, and they are really good friends. For the other two, Ninjas in Pajamas. That team, when they got Device, immediately, immediately moved into the major, basically. NIP have been a force to reckon with ever since they acquired Nikolai Reitz, and good gosh, they've been meshing very, very well. The final team's a little bit tricky. A couple of people are saying Navi, a couple of people are saying Astralis, a couple of people are saying FaZe Clan because, well, it's FaZe Clan. G2 might be an underdog, and it's not easy to say that. Nico, Amanek, Jax, the, the entire roster is incredibly well set up. Gambit and Navi are ones to watch. Everybody knows that. But the ones, the three teams to watch fully, as in like, look at the games, not just the players, is Astralis because of how many wins they had in the major. I can't wait to see how good Astralis are and if they're still that prominent threat for the major. Everybody takes them for granted in the offseason. They always do bad in the offseason. But guess what? Every single major that they've attended, they've still shown up. Number two, Heroic. Ever since that they were on the 18-game, 16-game win streak, whatever you want to say, they have been solid, good and then this last one bad they have shown turmoil and now a couple of controversies as well i don't need to know anything about controversies i want to see what everybody plays every single player here is new to the major scene if they show what i have seen in the 16 to 18 game win streak of when they played that if they do that in this major you could throw every brick at them every book every detail they're winning the major Third, Vitality. Here's why. Vitality are two-year majors, and now they're veterans. They have lost, though, every single time in Grand Finals semis, and Zaiwu is hungry for this. The number one player, that's right, I said it, number one player taking down simple in this major is present. This team is going to rock. Scratch RPK. Scratch NBK. Bring in Koichin. Bring in Masuda. Those two are also ones to watch. If Shox is G2 Shox, you're going to be shocked for what he pulls. I guarantee if Vitality are here to play and step up like that have been, we could be seeing ourselves a very first new championship that's French for so long. I can't wait to see what they bring to the table. Winning shot of the major best team is Astralis. We've said it time and time and again, four-time major champions, back-to-back-to-back major champions. They don't have device. Yeah, I get it. I've heard it all before. They have Lucky. Who the heck is Lucky? G2. He's been in G2 two times in two different majors. They have four members of the roster back still. They have the master himself, Glaive, at Strategies, back again. They're set up. They're focused. I honestly see them as a top contender because Navi have their stacked roster. They probably have the best roster they have had in years. If they have a chance to win it, it's Navi's turn to shine. But I honestly can't see it. We have seen Navi struggle in grand finals before. It always happens. We got Nikolai Reed going for a five-peat. Ninjas in pajamas, I believe, 
have the talent to make it to the finals and claim the finals. Well, is it all going to be on a uh, device's back? Possibly. But the way that team absolutely exploded when getting device, it, it was unbelievable. I have one hot take for you for the video as well. Watch the, watch the sale, but also watch the coins. If these souvenirs for players, if the player stickers don't come out until Legends are done, until Grand Finals, look for those coins. If you get a cheap coin for $3, okay, and the, uh, the souvenirs come out and you can't get them for under four, five, six, that's your time to swoop in with the coins. It's ends. Okay, you're just doing this for the memes, aren't you? I swear to God, I am not doing this for the memes. Here's why. Their rating as a team is a 1096, which is really, really good. Their KPR is, is a 0.696, okay? 0.696 is fourth best in the entire lineup. So they're only losing to Furia Tyloo and Renegades. Yes, again, their ADR as a team is a 7718, which is, again, amazing. At my stats, they're fifth best. Ents is in challengers and contenders, and they made it so incredibly far in the EU qualifier. They faced ninjas in pajamas. Yes, they lost. Get it. Their confidence, though, is amazing. I truly think that Entz, again, not memeing at all, is one to watch. So, in terms of a Dark Horse team, Furia's up there, Gambit Gaming, not really a Dark Horse, but they're, they're up there. Entz is one everyone should watch, I agree. But there's one that is skating so far under the radar. Uh, team Spirit is one team that is unbelievably overlooked and underrated as well. Chopper, Chopper and Feekster led that team, as well as the other core members, into the third spot in the CIS. Team Spirit hung in there with Navi, hung in there with uh, Verse Pro, hung in there with the likes of Gambit Gaming, and they looked unbelievably strong. So there you have it, guys. That's Zonix and Foxtail in my Discord server. They're extremely intelligent people. They've done a ton of analytics on this major and on the teams, and you can definitely trust their opinion when they talk about teams and people that they want to watch for the major. If you enjoyed it, let me know. I can always go ahead and upload the unedited interview, and I can always bring them back for a future video if you guys really did enjoy it. So let me know the constructive criticism down below, and I can adapt around that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching my major investing guide. Hopefully the interview was kind of an interesting thing to add to it, and hopefully you enjoyed that. Click that subscribe button to subscribe to the best investment tips for CSGO on YouTube. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this. Check out my Discord server and Twitter below if you want to go ahead and connect with me. And if you want to pick up some cool CSGO skins or some stickers from this major, be sure to check out Shadow Pay with a link in the description below. Thanks guys, see you next time. Peace.